The brutal truth about getting into the game industry is that 95% of graduates, I'm willing to bet, are not even qualified to join the industry. Now in this video, I'm going to be going over some valuable tips depending on where you're at in your trajectory. That is the do's and don'ts before college, the do's and don'ts while you're in college, and the do's and don'ts after college. Let's not waste any time, let's get to it. Before college, number one, you need to have a goal in mind. You cannot afford to go to college not knowing what you want to do. There are several avenues that you need to know about when going into game development. You can't say that I just want to be a game designer, I want to be a level designer, I want to be an artist. You have to know specifically within those fields what you want to focus on. You don't have to have all the answers before you go to college, but you do need to know an area that you can pursue because if you don't, you're going to graduate college being a jack of all trades and a very subpar candidate for getting a job. I'm going to leave a photo on this side of all of the jobs. Now, these are not all the titles, but a lot to get started. Research these titles and then figure out which part you want to pursue in college and then focus your skills on whatever you need to perform that title. Number two, you need to be making games early. Anybody who can crack open Unity and Unreal and make something that somebody else can play, you're already a game developer. You did not have to wait until after college in order to be considered a game developer. And more importantly, you learn games by making games. Colleges can give you the resources and the tools in order to make the games and teach you a baseline foundation of kind of how to put the game together. But in order to figure out how to make great games, you have to make games in general. It doesn't have to be big, but just small projects to help you understand what makes something good from something bad. Number three, you need to have an online presence or at least start one. It is very daunting to get into. It's hard to put yourself out there. I understand that, but you need to have a LinkedIn profile. The LinkedIn profile is going to give you access to industry professionals that you can contact directly. They're going to be giving you knowledge and direction on how you should tackle certain things for the interests that you like. Now, under the game designer umbrella, there is level design, there is combat mechanics, there are systems designs, there are game rules and game modes. There are so many things under these umbrella terms that you're hearing that you're not even aware of what the possibilities are. So understand which role you want to go towards. Ask the questions online by the people that are already doing the job. That is the best way to learn is to reach out to people who are doing what you already love to do. It makes sense when you think about it, right? Do that today. Make a LinkedIn account. If you don't have one, go ahead, make one. Reach out to 10 people. Sometimes you won't get a response back, but that's fine. If at least three people contact you back, you can use those as mentors along the way so you always have a soundboard for whatever you're working on. If you're working on a project, you can say, hey, check out my project. If you're working on getting your portfolio set up, you can say, hey, check out my portfolio. And they're going to give you information, tips, knowledge, tools in order to make your projects better or make yourself marketing better online. So having an online presence early is not necessarily for showing off your skills yet because you're just getting started. Hopefully you're not just getting started and you've been kind of making games for a while now. But if you're just getting started, you're really just making the LinkedIn profile just to start connecting with people to ask the questions. That is very important. Now, some of the don'ts. Number one, don't wait until college to make games. You already need to be doing the research that it takes in order to figure out which direction you want to go towards so you don't waste any time in college at all. College is meant to expose you to different areas of development, but you're not going to specialize in any one thing. So you need to be figuring out what trajectory you want to do before you go to college. So then you can cater your college experience to a more clear path so you don't get lost. If you get lost, you graduate with generic talents and the game industry is not hiring generic talents. They want somebody that's more specialized and can actually do the job that is asked of them. Number two of the don'ts, don't go to college without LinkedIn. And this is very critical because during college, you're going to feel like you don't have enough time to actually self market yourself. When I went through college, they didn't really, they told you to make a portfolio, a website, get on LinkedIn, network, but it wasn't stressed enough. 
and you sort of feel lost when you first do it, but just know that you're creating a LinkedIn profile to pretty much ask questions to industry devs at first. And then once you get some weight on your belt, which is making games, you can start putting that out online and getting feedback. Your work in progress shots, do a post on LinkedIn. You'll get feedback from industry professionals. Okay. Very important. Don't go to college without having a LinkedIn first. And some people have contacted me that are 16 years old. They're doing great. They're asking all the right questions before they even consider going to college. And then this is kind of a bonus, but it is one thing to note is that college is not for everybody. The truth about college is that pretty much when you enroll, you're learning outdated information. The curriculum is not always updated to the current technology because the game industry moves so fast. So if you are worried about the money or you're in a situation where you can't really go to college because some other circumstances, there is so much free knowledge on YouTube alone, on Udemy. Look on there, be self-taught, learn how to code, learn how to open up a game engine, learn C Sharp using Unity, learn blueprints using Unreal, learn how a game works and just make games from beginning to end so you can get your EXP up. I know that if I had to do it again, knowing what I know now, I would be better off spending those four years actually crafting my skills, growing my skills, building an online presence, and then applying for a job after those four years or maybe even two years. But keep in mind that you're going to be learning condensed knowledge. If you get on YouTube, you can learn something in a week that would take college 10 weeks in order to teach because they have to teach. 30 students at one time. So you're not going to get that individual attention, that individual learning plan that's going to help you accelerate your growth for your skills. You're not going to get that. But on YouTube, they're talking to you as if they're talking to only one person. They're not teaching a course so they can condense all of this information down into a video so that you can learn and they'll show you along the way. So one thing you might consider is that it's not the end of the world if you don't go to college for game design, game development, whatever you want to do. There is copious amounts of knowledge out there for free, but some people offer courses and I would tell you don't stray away from courses at all. You're paying for even more condensed knowledge that goes more in depth about things that colleges probably don't even offer. Know that college offers you general knowledge, but they don't offer you specialization knowledge and specialization knowledge is where you get the industry jobs at. That's what makes you marketable for yourself to these employers that are going to hire you on. So also consider that. All right. So let's switch gears over to if you're in college. Number one, do specialize in a specific area. If you don't know which area you want to go towards, you need to be researching which area that you have an interest in. Some of this is figuring out what you don't like so it can redirect you towards what you do like. So I'm going to be leaving an image over here that has the industry jobs and I'll even link that in the description below to the post on LinkedIn so you can actually blow that up and look at it. But there are several sub areas under the game development umbrella that you need to be aware about. So figure out what you want to specialize in and then just be moderately curious about other areas. Don't be a jack of all trades, of course, but being knowledgeable about other areas will actually help you through school quite a bit because you'll know how to communicate when you work on projects together. And you'll also know how to start making your projects solo so that you can fill in the blanks for anything that's missing. Number two, spend at least 10 hours minimum per week on whatever areas of interest you are going towards. This is not only going to help you specialize a lot more, this is actually going to help you figure out if you even like the route that you've went down. I had a roommate and he went to college in animation at first, but then he ended up being a coder and a great one at that. He just needed exposure. So that's why it is important for you to research which roles interest you and then try those out ask the questions. And then if you just have a resistance towards learning any more about that, then maybe that's not for you. But those 10 hours a week is going to give you the time to sit aside to actually figure out whether or not you like something, specialize in that thing a little bit more and make you a powerhouse in that specific area as you go through college. And that's going to make your projects better overall and make you more of a threat when you go through college. Healthy competition is great in college. You want to excel. You excelling is going to help other people excel because they see the great work that you do. Do the work. 10 hours minimum 
a week. College is only going to teach you general knowledge and you cannot afford to not be learning on the side. Number three, you need to be making games outside of the college curriculum. There is a thing called a senior capstone project if you don't know about it, but for your senior year, you will make your game that is going to market your potential to the rest of the world. A lot of people have reached out to me so far and their capstone project looks like freshman work, pre-freshman work. Now that could be the curriculum that they decided to sign up for and pay for, or it could be them not knowing what to do. And so they just kind of floated by. But one thing you need to understand is that if you follow the college curriculum verbatim to what they offer, you might as well drop out. I'm being dead serious. You might as well drop out because you're not going to be graduating with any type of quality work at all. It just simply doesn't happen. So make games. That is going to be the ultimate thing that's going to teach you game development. You don't know what a good game is versus a bad game unless you make a game. You don't know what works versus what doesn't work unless you make a game. You could have a cool idea. A lot of people tend to have a lot of those. But once you actually put them into the game and you try them out, it may not be a great idea at all. So if you just make games, you'll start to learn what works, what doesn't, and that's applicable skills throughout your whole career because you're going to be figuring out what works. Why was it fun? You're going to figure out the why behind why games start to work. You make games. Oh, this is fun because of that reason. Oh, this AAA game that I love. This is fun because of that reason. So it's going to help you start to analyze games from a deeper perspective to make you an overall better game designer, game developer in the first place. So please do that. Make games outside of the curriculum. Make solo games. You don't have to make games with a group of people all the time. Honestly, most of the people that you're going to be making games with is just going to slow you down. A lot of people don't have the passion, the determination to actually sit down and make a game because making games are hard. Egos collide. You're going to be figuring out your strengths, your weaknesses, whether or not you can work with people. You're going to be upgrading your communication skills throughout and you're going to get mad. You're going to get sad. You're going to get glad. You're going to be happy. You're going to be ecstatic. Then you're going to be pissed off the next day because somebody deleted your project. So things happen, but... Just know that making games will make you a more well-rounded person overall. You need to be doing this. Number four, start self-branding. Get on LinkedIn, make a profile. It doesn't have to show off any of your work yet. You're still making stuff, but just making a profile will get you into the mood, get you into the environment of a more professional setting online. Once you start getting projects under your belt, you can post them. Even work in progress shots, you can post those. Start making your portfolio, your website, working on resume, cover letters. Make a mock resume and cover letter to a position that may not even be open yet, but to your favorite studio. So you can actually start building up the skills on how to self-market. Self-marketing yourself is very important and it's an aspect of college that is not taught. You have your skill set and you have your self-marketing. Your skill set is what you're going to be building up in college and with those extra 10 hours a week minimum to specialize in an area of your interest. But you also need the self-marketing. And that's what happens at the end of college once you graduate is that you have sort of the skill set, maybe a lackluster skill set if you weren't putting in the time. But you almost have no marketing skills because they don't teach that in college and you need to know how to self-market in order to get jobs because that does matter. If an HR at a company looks at your portfolio and it looks meh or it looks bad, they're gonna click off of it immediately. So at least make it look professional. So I'm going to be linking my website down below and then I may even put it up on the screen while I'm talking about it right now so we can kind of see it. But my website looks clean, it's well presented. It gives a lot of information about how I contributed to a project, what the project was, some of the breakdowns about how I thought about complex problems and came up with solutions for them. So I'll post this on the screen while I'm talking about it, but self-branding is very important and it's better that you get exposed to it very early on. And for anyone who is sophomore, junior, or senior and haven't done that, you're behind. So go ahead and make an online presence for yourself, make a portfolio, make a website. This is very critical. Please do this. Number five, be looking at internships. If you're a freshman, it may be a little bit too early to start looking at internships. But at this point, you should have 
your online presence. You should have your LinkedIn profile, your website, your portfolio, and just submit it. If you end up getting the internship, that's great. But as well, if you submit to the internship and you get rejected, you'll start to slowly understand what you need to bring to the table in order to qualify for an internship the next year. So sophomore year, look for internships again. Junior, look for internships again. And by continuously being on LinkedIn and submitting those applications to the internships, hopefully you get one. But if you don't, you'll start to understand what they're looking for. And if you get rejected, ask what you did wrong, what you can improve on. So that way, you know all of this information before you graduate. And if you get an internship in the meantime, then that's great as well. It's a win win situation. But knowing the expectations of what you need to do while you're going through college is going to be paramount to your success. They're not teaching this in college because they simply don't know. If you go to the career advisors, they're going to give you general knowledge about how to kind of make yourself better. But from the people that have contacted me and they said they've been working with their career advisors, the career advisors are doing you no favors. I am, though. I'm trying to at least. So <laughs> listen to me. Reach out to people on LinkedIn. Ask questions. Submit applications for internships so you understand how to write a resume, how to write a cover letter. It doesn't matter if you get rejected. You're still learning the skills that are going to be necessary for later in life when you graduate. If you don't end up getting an internship by that point, at least you understand how to make a cover letter, how to make, how to design a resume, how to have a good portfolio that looks professional. And then you have a couple of people in your network that you can talk to afterwards because you've been connecting this whole time. That's very important. Do that. Let's get on to number six. You need to be researching college capstone projects that are executed at a high quality. So get online, get on the Google search and just type in student projects or phenomenal student projects, senior capstone projects. Anything in that vein you need to be looking at because you need to understand what the expectations are. I just talked about it. If you don't know what the goal is, then how can you properly prepare yourself to get hired after graduation? It is damn near impossible because nobody's going to be telling you all the information you need to know. So look at some of the best senior projects. That is your competition. Now strive for that benchmark. And look up about five of these five senior projects that look phenomenal, because the more the time goes on, the more those senior projects are starting to look like indie games made by professional companies, because these are the people who put in the time, who have the passion, who specialize, who got together with like minded people that also wanted to specialize and create good quality content for their game. And they made almost an indie game out of their senior capstone project. And I bet you that most of these people have made several projects by the point that they got to the senior project so that they're able to have the skills necessary to make a pretty good product that people will actually like to play. So this is super important. Research the expectations by looking at projects that senior college students are doing right now. This is going to save you the heartache of getting to the finish line senior year graduating and realize that the project that you have as your senior capstone is actually looking like freshman work. You don't want that because that is not hireable at all. They will laugh at you. I have been on the other side and sometimes you will laugh at the submissions that graduates make because they're so behind. It is what it is. It's a grim reality. But you don't want to be that person that the game developers are laughing at because you submitted a half-baked product. So do the research early to save you the heartache later. Okay, so let's continue. So these are what you should not do if you're in college, okay? So number one, don't mindlessly play video games. Just because you are in college to make video games doesn't mean that you should be spending a copious amount of time playing them. In fact, it's actually detrimental to your success going through college because you need to be spending that time learning how to create video games rather than playing them. And it takes a certain amount of skill to be able to play a video game and actually analyze it along the way. 
So you need to be focused on the analysis part of playing video games if you do play video games. Now that doesn't mean that you can't play video games for pure entertainment, but you need to be looking at it, breaking the games down that you're playing, and figuring out the components that come together to make the whole game actually work. So number two, don't do just the bare minimum in your college courses. If you do that, you might as well drop out of college right now. And that's about as real as I can get. You are not going to be anywhere remotely close to getting into the industry if you just follow the course curriculum verbatim to what they're saying. You just can't get in. It's not possible. There's no passion in that. There's no specialization in that. You're just another generalist jack of all trades that doesn't have the skill set to do any one thing good, which is specialization. You don't want to be that person. So. What I was saying, 10 hours a week minimum, figure out what you want to invest your time into, which is an area of interest or a certain title or role that you want to grow towards and invest the time in order to learn. But if you're going to be just following along with the course, I recommend you just drop out of college because you're not going to get a job. You're just wasting money at that point. That's the brutal, honest truth. Now, number three, going off of being a generalist and a jack of all trades, you want to learn how to wear multiple hats on a project for the people that you work with, but don't be a chameleon. At least have a specialization that you're working towards. And then it's OK to pick up the slack on a part of the project that somebody is not or the team is not well versed in. So you take it upon yourself to learn that area to benefit your team, but do not stay there. You are not a scripter. You're not a game designer. You're not a level designer and a tech artist all in one. Should you be should you be capable of doing those things? Yes, but you cannot market yourself that way. Once you graduate college, you can't say I am a designer. I'm a level designer. I'm a tech artist. I'm a coder. I know C sharp. I know C plus plus. I can model. I can do ZBrush. I know Maya. You can't say all that. That has no focus whatsoever. You're going to be looked at as a jack of all trades that is arrogant, maybe even narcissistic, because from the HR's point of view, you think you can do it all. And that's not a good look. They want somebody that's very passionate in one specific area that is knowledgeable and curious about other areas. That's where you want to be at. You don't want to be some person that's trying to take credit on every single area of a project because it's not going to help you as much as you think. On top of that, don't work with loser teammates. If your teammates are not putting up the effort, you have to confront them and acknowledge that they're not doing the work and then make a decision to either keep them on, cut them or make sure they get their stuff together. But working with loser teammates will only slow you down. I will say this. This leads into my next topic is that people who play video games and love them. That doesn't mean that translates to making them. OK, well, yeah, don't work with loser teammates because they will just drag you down. If the passion is not there, if they're not putting in the work, if they're doing the bare minimum, do not hang out with them because they're going to drag you down. They're going to stunt your growth. If you're waiting on them for something to get done on the project, then they're stunting your growth. So either cut them from the project, find somebody else or address the situation. Go to them, confront them and say, if you don't do the work, something has to be done. Whatever that may be, figure it out. But do not let anybody slack on the projects that you're making because that's not going to get you anywhere. Number four, don't think that your love for video games will secure you a job after college. I don't care. Pretty sure HR doesn't care either that you are all so passionate about games. Oh, I just love to, you know, study them and look at them and analyze them. And, you know, I think this is my calling. Who cares? Honestly, who the hell cares? If you did not have the skill set to back it up, you're just blowing hot air. That's all you doing. And for the people who thought about going to college just because they love video games, it is two different beasts. Just because you play Call of Duty or an MMO for five plus hours a day doesn't mean that you're going to be a great game developer. It does not translate that way. Games are hard work. And that's why it's so damn hard to get into the industry, because you have to know a lot of knowledge to get in. It's not easy at all. So if you're somebody that just loves to play video games and that's it, you're going to have a really rough time. 
And the only person that you're letting down is yourself. So you have to be honest. Am I here just because I love playing video games and that's it? If you do not have a passion for creating them, then you're just wasting money. And only you can decide whether or not you're in college just because you love video games. But if you can't get motivated to make video games in your own time and learn, then you shouldn't even be there. I've seen so many people in college do the bare minimum, laughable work. I've seen a whole classroom laugh at somebody because their work was just so bad. But when you would talk to them, they would just say, oh, I love this game. I love this game. I love this. I do this. No. Understand that just because you love video games does not mean that you're meant to make them. Okay? That's the brutal, honest truth. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Number five, don't stay inside. Go out and experience college for what it is. Me and my crew ran into a guy on the transit one day and we were asking him. He was a game developer that was a senior. We were impressionable freshmen and we, we was asking him, what does it take to become a better game developer? And he said to us, go outside, go to the park, play some soccer. Go to the park, take a bike ride, go to a party downtown, do some archery, get into some clubs. The point of the matter is, is that be present in your college community around you. Be present in the groups that your college offers and just get out there into the world, into the city, have different experiences, make a couple of mistakes, learn from them. And then now thinking about it, he was exactly right. Inspiration just doesn't come from other video games of the past. Inspiration comes from real life scenarios. They come from going to a location and having different experiences, using those experiences to craft your game. It could be a person that you talk to that gives you an idea for your game. It could be a group that you went to. Okay, little gnat there. We got him though. He's dead. It could be a group that you go to that gives you inspiration for an entire game. Or you can meet somebody that has just as much passion as you do so you can actually recruit them onto your team and then they can bring another angle to your game. So there are so many experiences that you can take from real life and put those into a game experience. It's unreal. But thinking about it now, yeah, he was completely right. My group that I was in in college did a lot of things. And in turn, we got the energy and the vitality to actually do the work and put those experiences in the game so that we can make good quality games. Our senior capstone project was Doomerang. If you want to check that out, it'll be on my website. The link will be in the description. But Doomerang came a lot from college experience. Just outside, just experience in life so go do that now number six is the big one do not start to devote more time to a boyfriend a girlfriend or a partner more so than focusing on your studies there was this one couple that i knew in college and they were always on each other and they slowly started to trickle off of excellence because they were infatuated too much with each other. So just be aware that relationships in college can slow you down if you invest too much time into them. This is already a hard enough career to get into. So adding another person on top of that may not be the right move. But if you do get into a relationship, understand that you need to always keep your studies in mind first. Because the skills and knowledge that you learn in college, nobody can take those away from you. But relationships in college, a lot of them are very fickle and they dry out. So understand that devoting too much time into another person while you're in college is not always the best move. Still experience life, still experience college, but just understand that if you start to devote more time to spending time with your significant other in college, then you are going 
to waste a lot of time, not waste, but you're going to start spending a lot more time with them that you could be to excel your growth into getting into the industry. Make sure you're secure before you invest a lot of time into another person. OK, the last section was a long one, but now we're finally moving on to what to do after college. So number one, do continue to make games and develop your skills to learn and grow. You haven't crossed the finish line yet. Are you in the industry yet? OK, you haven't crossed the finish line. And even when you get to the industry, that's not the finish line either. But continue to make games to build out your portfolio. A good trap that you can get stuck in is that you try to put too much effort into submitting application after application, putting too much investment into your portfolio, but you're not actually building your skills anymore. And this is a trap that I actually fell into myself. I thought that I wasn't marketing myself correctly, so I stopped building my skills. I stopped building my skills for about six months, focused solely on online presence, and that wasn't the right move. During that time, I wasn't really making games to learn and grow, so I just let that slip by the wayside, and that made it a lot harder for me to actually secure a job, and probably the reason why it took me a year after college to actually secure a job. So always work on your skills and always put your work on LinkedIn and allow other people to look at your work. This is very, very critical because you want to get your presence known out there. You want to get your work in front of industry professionals so that they can give you feedback. Number two, keep developing your online presence. Keep updating your LinkedIn. Keep reaching out to people in the industry about what you should learn so that you can have a goal in mind on what to actually learn and invest your time into. And then now at this point, you should have a very steady network to lean on. And if you don't, just start sending out connection requests for people that you want to have a connection request with. It's that simple. And especially for the people who are in the roles that you want. Still continue to reach out. And when one of the great things about having a network online and learning to reach out to people is that after you submit applications online for whatever role that you want to, you can actually seek out the human resources representative at a certain company and then contact them directly. Say, hey, my name is so and so. This is the position that I've been looking for for a while. I think I'm a great fit. Just wanted to let you know that I submitted an application for this position so that you can get some direct contact. So say, hey, my name is so and so just submitted an application. I'm excited to work for this company and I think I'm a great fit for this this role. And then in that same message, you can actually link the job application and then say, hey, looking forward to hearing back. But by looking up the human resources or the talent acquisition, you show that, OK, you're going above and beyond just submitting an application. You're looking them up online. You're figuring out who they are. You're doing your research and you're contacting the right people. So it shows that you know how to research, which is great as well. Number three, do put in 20 hours of work minimum per week in an area of your interest. At this point, if you do not know your area of interest, you're behind. If you have a senior capstone project that still looks like a freshman project and you have not done your research on the expectations of some of the best senior projects out there, you are behind. I have a brutal, honest truth for you. You are not hireable. Let's be realistic about this. If you have gone through this video and you have watched the before college, the in college part, and you haven't done a lot of these things, you are severely behind. For six months, go into powerhouse mode and work 20 hours a week minimum to raise your skill set so that you're actually hireable. If you have submitted over 150 applications, 200 applications and you're not getting a bite. You need to take a break from that. That is psychologically damaging if you submit that many applications and you don't continue to grow your skills. So for your sake, you need to spend, I'm going to say this again, 20 hours a week minimum to actually build out your skill set. Reach out to mentors online, figure out exactly what you need to learn after you know which area you want to pursue and you need to get to work. It's no time for pity post. 
online about I'm not able to find a job. Nobody's hiring me. I'm getting all of these rejection email letters. If you can look at your work and compare it to some of the best college student works out there and you're not even in the ballpark, you got work to do. You have to be brutally honest with yourself here because a lot of the people that I see on my feed, a lot of the people that have contacted me so far, you're not even hireable. And that's the truth. It may be through no fault of your own. If you don't have the knowledge, the expectations of what you need to do, then how can you make a game plan? But if you're watching this video and you're listening and you're taking every word that I'm saying into account, you have to be accountable for where you're at. Get mad about where you're at. Get on YouTube. Figure out what you want to do. And then get after it. You don't have time to play around anymore. Because if you're graduated and you have a subpar portfolio, you're at the bottom of the barrel. I was one of the top game designers in my class. And it still took me a year after college to land a job. So you got work to do. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you that information so you don't have to go through that depression alone. You don't have to go through feeling unworthy alone. I'm here to give you that information. But also I'm here to deliver the brutal, honest truth that 95% of the people who graduate college are not even hireable. You're not even in the ballpark. So I have some work to do to help you all out. And you all have some major work to do to grow and nurture your skill set. Ooh, now, going into the next section, you need an accountability partner to keep you on track after college because there are so many emotions that you go through, the amount of unworthy that you feel, the amount of hurt that you feel that you can't break into the industry, the amount of worthlessness that you feel because nobody's gonna hire you. It takes its toll. And during my time, during that year, I had one friend that I met in college. He would check up on me every month, send me job applications, apply for this. Hey Tyvik, apply for this. How many jobs have you applied to this month, this week? How you doing, man? Just checking up with you. That was paramount in my success right now because that kept me going. I understand what it takes, what you go through when you're going through that moment of just feeling like you're worthless after you've just devoted four years and took on so much debt just to be shut down and rejected. I understand what that feels like. So that's why I'm here to create superhuman game designers, game developers, so that you don't have to go through that. Get an accountability partner. And make sure y'all keep each other on track or they keep you on track. But it's rough. I understand that. So get somebody that's going to support you along the way. Game development is already a look down upon career. You looked at as a nerd or a loser. I know in my hometown that's what people looked at me as because I wanted to create video games. And all the hype of going to school saying that you're going to create video games and then going back to your hometown for a year. You feel like a failure, a complete failure. I've been there. So now I'm trying to help everybody else not go through what I went through. Don't stress your portfolio more than your actual projects or your work. Presentation of your work is one thing, but you need to actively grow your skill sets. So what I would say is spend 70% of your time growing your skill set, 30% of your time growing your online presence. That can be LinkedIn, that can be portfolio, that can be cover letter writing, that can be a resume, that can be reaching out to ask questions. But you don't need to spend a copious amount of time building your personal brand or self-marketing, but you're not growing your skills. Do not do that. Always be actively looking to increase your skills because at this point, if you're in a bad spot, you need to be learning a lot. 
It's going to be hard. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. But you can make it through it. It's just going to hurt a little bit. A lot of bit. (laughs) But you can make it through it. Number two, don't get comfortable. Keep your head up. You're going to make it one day. If you're persistent enough. Remember that accountability partner. Reach on them when you need a little boost. And also get into the gym. That takes away a lot of stress that'll keep you in the right state of mind i go to the gym still and i love it it's a nice release of stress and it's something that nobody can take away from you is actively working on yourself if you are healthy you feel healthy then you're going to do healthy work on getting to where you need to be so stay active in the gym number three which is very important Don't pass on the undesirable roles just because you can't lower your pride in order to take them. For me, graduating, wanting to be a game designer, I liked combat mechanics. I liked player mechanics, player abilities, all of that. But I was looking specifically for game designer roles. But I actually got my break into the industry through quality assurance slash development support. That was the title role um, at Naughty Dog. And I was actually on the East Coast at the time, and I took a road trip in my car all the way to California. Didn't even have the job yet, but I went to the site and I ended up getting the job. Was quality assurance what I wanted to go into first? No, I wanted to jump directly into the role that I actually wanted, which was game designer. But I had to work my way up. I had to take a job that I necessarily didn't want in order to get to where I need to be. And you have to do that too. And looking back on it in retrospect, Quality assurance is one of the best times that I've had in the industry. I learned a lot. I learned how to problem solve. I learned a great deal of communication skills. And I loved the people that I worked with. So at the end of the day, it only made me a stronger game designer because now I can communicate with quality assurance. I'm a better problem solver because of it. And my communication just went through the roof because you have to have good communication when you're in QA. So understand that you might have to take a job that you don't like. As long as it gets you in the environment of the game developers, that is at least a start. Some people have taken up being a janitor. If the campus is big enough, they started off, you know, serving lunch just to get in the environment. But do understand that you might have to take some undesirable roles to get to where you need to be. And it's just a small stepping stone on your journey. You might need to make that move. Don't run away from it. Okay, this is one of my longer videos. We covered a lot of information and I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit because I've been recording this for so long. But thank you for watching. And then if you have any other comments, concerns or any topics that you want me to speak over, then please drop them in the comments below. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe while you're down there. But overall, game development is not meant for everyone and it is very very difficult to get into. It's not easy. Just because you have a love for making video games doesn't mean that you're going to do okay in this career path. So if you're not okay with doing everything that I just listed, then good luck to you trying to get into the game industry because it is hard. I'm giving you the tools, the tricks, the cheat codes for streamlining your way into the industry. So best of luck to you on using those to your advantage and getting into the industry. And I hope this video helped quite a lot. And before I leave, I wanna say thank you for all the people that have subscribed to me. I am at 233 subscribers now, and that is insane. So I'm hoping that you're finding these videos informative. And I'm also over, I think I've gained like 400 to 500 followers on LinkedIn over the past two and a half weeks. So also thank you all for supporting me on LinkedIn with my superhuman game designer series where I break down just random tidbits of knowledge that I've learned over the years so I can give back that knowledge to the community that taught me. So hopefully those help as well. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something from this and then I'll see you next time. Peace.